Come on, Trovat. Okay, let's start because today is a very big um, material and um, we need time. Yeah? So we, who is a delay, no problem. He can see, he can find my lesson online. I will post it in cloud with a link in your logbook and also on the Facebook. Well, no problem at all. Today we will discuss regarding, ah, first of all, uh, for your information, I will repeat it again today, if I will not forget about it. From the, this week, we will arrange Saturday lessons, practical lessons on simulator. Actually, it is not illegal. We cannot invite you in the academy, but I will discuss with the rector for this uh, matter. And I need you to work on the simulator, just to touch it, just to, uh, to keep hands and to be ready for vessels uh, facility, okay? So today we will discuss about the farm and walls. And uh, from this Saturday, if everything okay, I will call one by one your groups in the academy, in the fourth floor, for the simulator trainings. We will do the first group from 10 to 12, the second group from 12 to uh, 1400, next group from 1400 to 1600, and 16 to 1800. Okay, that's will be not easy for you and for me, but ANR we will do this just because you need to touch it. You need to work with the simulator. Okay. No more Well, um, today let's start discuss about the pumps, cargo pumps and uh, cargo valves. Cargo pump and cargo valve. The last uh, lesson we discussed about the cargo lines, but the cargo lines itself is nothing. Yeah? We need to pump out and, uh, uh, and receive the cargo on board the vessel. In this case, the pumps and the valves assisting us to do it. So the fundamental principle of the pump is the, is the distinctive for two phases, to move the liquid from pump and to induce energy into the liquid in order to move it to the required destination. So the pump, you must take the cargo from somewhere and push it up. Yeah. Okay, I will not start to discuss with you a lot about it because that is the engineers. Uh, <laughs> but you are future chief officer. And chief officer must be very, very familiar how the pump's working. Because in the case, the, you will uh, operate the pump incorrect, you will damage the pump, and then after you will have the troubles. You will have problem, you and captain. Yeah, so be careful with the pumps for the future when you will work. So I suggest you and strongly suggest you to be to check in the YouTube to find material how to correct operate the pump when you will be on board. And don't push it, don't pull it on the far away, oh, when I will be chief officer, no. You must study how the pump working today already. You must know, you must keep in the brain how the pump working, the principle of pump liquid, transferring the liquid by the pump. Okay, we have two ways. The ship tank is taking, sorry, I will move it here, yeah. Okay, the ship's tank is this one, and you have to pump it somewhere in the short tank. In case you will take the cargo from the bottom of the tank, it is easy to work for the pump. And you transfer it somewhere far away, but sometimes it is also difficult it is also difficult and you have to pump it through the 
stop. Yeah. So in some cases you have to do. In this case, this pump must to have a good suction. We will discuss about it later today. Well, that is the pumps. How is they working? Please read it material. And you will have these questions. You have to answer for these questions. What is the static head? What is the friction head, discharge head, total and so on. I will not stop a long time for it, but ANR, you must be very familiar for it. Yeah? You must to, to understand the principle of pump for working on the pumps. What I will try to explain you today that we have for today, for nowadays, we have two different system of the pumping system on board the tanker. One is a traditional or linear pumping system. What does it mean? We have a vessel with the cargo tanks and um, pump room. In this pump room, we have a cargo pumps located. And from each tank, you have the line and valves. So to take the cargo from the tank, you have to start the pump in pump room and open the valve in the cargo tank. When you need to discharge from other tank, you just open another valve. And so you're operating by the valve opening. This system is on our cadet ship. If you've been on the board the cadet vessel, you must be familiar with the lines. Yeah? Well, I will just show you the cadet system, how it is there. Wait, hold on a second. Not there. I will try to stop sharing so far. And I will find, I will show you, I will show you the, then get that line. Okay, I cannot find it right now, but any are you are, I will show you later. I will put it in our, in our material, the cadet line. So next, what is on this Saturday, I will explain you on the simulator, what is the traditional linear piping system and deep well on the simulator you will understand more easily. But today, please read it and uh, please remember it because you will have these questions on your exam. Well, what is the deep well or submerged system? That means when you have pumps in every single tank, when you have a tank and the same tank has its own pump, yeah, deep well pump. In this case, you can, you can uh, transfer as many cargo as you have in, um, as you have tanks and pumps single to use. So here what I explain you that is a cargo pump room and the pump room has the lines and the, each line has the valve. Yeah, you can see here. And this one is another system is a system with a single tank has its own pump yeah you have to discharge it here. We will use simulator for two different tanks, uh, tankers. One is a linear and one with a framo. What a framo means deep well submerged tanks. On board the ship, we use three different type of the pumps. Normally, we can use, use of course more, but the normally cargo pumps are three different. Centrifugal pump, displacement pump, and ejector, ejector pump. How they are working? Let's we see them one by one. Centrifugal pump. 
centrifugal pump working for the uh, taking by very high speed rotation and take displace the cargo by the uh, gravity. Yeah? So it's a, it's a very common and very popular, the centrifugal tank. Every one of you has this one used to, uh, in home also, maybe. Somebody use it in home, just start the pump, it's going rotating and displacing the cargo. So it consists of impeller, fluid on and going to discharge. So that is very simple, but it is very sensitive. You can damage the pump also. If something wrong, uh, there are uh, some wrong material, so it's sensitive. The next, the, that is the centrifugal pump. You must always to start it against the closed valve. What does it mean? First of all, you start the pump, and after you open the valve. If you will do it opposite way, if you will do it open the valve, then you can not start the uh, the pump because you will have the back pressure. Be careful for it, and remember it. Try to understand it, and thereafter you will have the exam for it and in exam you have to answer why and what is the reason to open consequently the cargo pump first you have to start over start the pump build up the pressure and after that you have to open the valve so that's the more mat mathematical and uh, physical formulas for it We have the one problem with the centrifugal pump. The centrifugal pump has a cavitation. Cavitation is a chemical and uh, physical reason to damage the cargo pump. Yeah, so when the fluid is going through the impeller and passing through the impeller, the fluid has its own the bulb bulbs of the air and this bulb of air when they are dropping off they are taking out the material from the stainless steel from the from the cast iron doesn't matter and they are damaging material this cavitation you cannot understand when it's happened but you can understand it by the noise of the pump working improperly or just predict it and Start the cargo pump easily, increase, build up the pressure easily, and reduce the cargo pump easily. Never try, never do the jump of the pressures. So to avoid the cavitation, it may maybe nothing will happen immediately, but it can damage eventually the cargo pump. That you can see the cavitation. And Surge of pressure. Surge, you mean it means build up, increase the pressure. Yeah. The surge of pressure, water hammering, yeah, could be happen in many situations, and this one can damage your cargo line. You are sitting in cargo control room, and you just start the pressure, start the pump, and you don't feel what's happened on deck. You don't listen it because you're far away. But the man who is standing by on deck, your AB or OS or doesn't matter who, he is listening the hammering, ba bang, ba bang, and he have to inform you about it. Okay, now you are cadet. You are staying on deck, and you hear the some big noise, the water hammering, the liquid hammering. You have to immediately report to the cargo control room that they are doing something wrong. If you will not inform them immediately, you may have an explosion on deck. And that could be very, very bad, bad to lead the bad consequences. So the cargo pump has this problem with the water hammering, liquid hammering. Please read about it and check more information about it. Well, next. Um, we can discuss about the displacement cargo pumps. Displacement cargo pumps are just taking the part of the cargo and displace it. The centrifugal pumps continuously working with the uh, 
liquid. Yeah, so it is not taking the partial cargo. It's just continuously taking the parts and without non-stop is passing the cargo to the pump line. The displacement cargo pump move a certain volume to each cycle. So you can very easily understand the displacement cargo pump, how it's working. You take the injection spritz, you take, and this one is the cargo pump, displacement cargo pump, it's working. It takes the some amount of liquid and displaces it. Take some amount of liquid, displaces it. So that is a very easy principle of displacement cargo pump. Displacement cargo pump, that is the uh, piston pumps and other, they have a very good suction. You can suck, you can clean, you can strip the cargo tank very easily by the displacement cargo pump. With the centrifugal cargo pump, it, this operation takes time and it is not so easy. So here on this picture, you can see that is a two different picture. So the one part of the working cycle is the piston is going back this direction. So it's uh, making suction from this part, make suction, this valve is closer. It's suction this part, it's okay. This cylinder is a fill it with the liquid. So next cycle is here. The piston is going back, going to push the cargo out this way. In this case, this valve must be closed. So it's very easy. Again, I repeat like a spritz. Of course, we have another few type of the cargo pumps is a screw pump with a rotor pump. So they are, but they are used not so frequently like a two previous pump, which I saw, showed you before. The most interesting and the most uh, easy in this world, the pump is a, a, a deck, uh, ejector pump. Sometimes they are calling it ductor pump. Yeah. So these ejector pumps are very commonly used for the stripping, for the stripping cargo and stripping the ballast. So both of them are used on board the tanker ship. And not only the tanker, maybe you will be on board of the dry ship or the container ship, any you will use a ductor pump for the stripping of the ballast. What is the principle of working of this pump? It's very easy, very simple, and very reliable. It can work all of your life. And sometimes the vessel going to scrub, but the ductor pumps are still able to work. Okay, you have to send the liquid, the same liquid, remember it please, the same liquid which you are taking suction, the same liquid you have to send here. If you're doing it with ballast, with the stripping the ballast, it's a water. You send here the seawater with a high speed. You send the seawater with a high speed, it's going this way. And from the bottom part, it takes the vacuum. It's a negative pressure here, it's a vacuum. Vacuum is going to suck the ballast water. Yeah, okay. And you discharge it overboard. It's very easy. That's so that is a different way. So another way you send the liquid here and this one is a suction. So it doesn't matter which side you're sending. But remember the same liquid which you are taking, which you are going to discharge, you must to take. In case this is a cargo, yeah, you cannot send the water in this line. No, you must to take the pressure of cargo, grud oil or I don't know what kind of cargo here, You may, may, maybe fuel oil. You send it with a high pressure, high speed here, and the same crude oil, you will take the suction here. Why do we need it? When you're working with a centrifugal pump, you're discharging big amount, but finally, they are still remaining some part of the cargo on the bottom, still exist. And this part of the cargo, the centrifugal pump cannot take, cannot make suction, no way. In this case, you start the adductor by the circulating the cargo to the slope tank or to some other compartment and taking the suction. 
this we will study and we will use it this adductor pump in our lessons on our practical exercises and simulators on this saturday not but the next saturday probably i will show you how to use the adductor pump well i suggest you to read it and if you don't understand really how it works please open youtube and uh, they are they have a very good oh, okay here again the suction is this way and the working liquid is going this way yeah to discharge so in this case here we have a vacuum negative side of the pressure On big tankers, big tankers, I mean the VLCC, you can find the Marflex cargo. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You can find the cargo pump Marflex. This is the electrical pump. Yeah. It's very rare, but very, very useful and very nice. Too. But most, oh, sorry, uh, what I tell you on the, not, not, Sorry, I have a mistake. On the big VLCC tankers, you will find the cargo pumps in the steam driving pumps, steam turbines. That is a very high capacity tanks working by steam, which producing engine room. From engine room, from the boiler, they take the steam, rotate the cargo pump, steam turbine, and the suction is going from the, uh, from the tanks. This one, they need uh, in this case that is a usually we work on the used on the linear vessel traditional ships vessel so they have a cargo pump with a steam turbine and so let me see next uh, slide so here we have a steam turbine um that's the picture is not really good to show but you can see it uh, when you download this lesson so that is the from where the cargo is going and it's going on deck please be careful for it and uh, try to understand it the steam pie a steam driving pump is taking from the bottom of the tanks from the bottom taking the cargo and push it on deck it's a difference about 18 20 meters yeah for this high so they're taking the good suction from the bottom of the tank and pushing on the deck and discharging on the manifold that's we have seen already on the previous lesson here how is the what consists of the steam driving pump so it's it's uh, really big and uh, sophisticated it's uh, difficult to understand immediately but it's a uh, used a lot and engineers sometimes they have a troubles for it and um, it's steam driving pump is very difficult for engineers and for uh, chief officer also with the pump and what is the next one here cargo pump driving by electrical motor is called it marflex it's a very useful very nice very reliable but very expensive thing so you can see here electrical pump, electrical motor, which is located on deck. And where is the electricity? There is a risk of explosion, risk of ignition. So that's why it is, it needs uh, to be protected. Very good protection with the uh, electrical, electrical protective to be good. So that's why these cargo pumps are very expensive. And not many tankers are used to. So this centrifugal pump is located on deck and they are driving it. And here we have a, a centrifugal impeller, which is working here. Okay, we can see it next. That is a Marflex. So pump is here. You see it's like so big. Um, sometimes it's a two meters height. Yeah, the electrical driving a motor only. Here is a driving shaft, electric uh, centrifugal impeller, and this uh, yellow one is a liquid, 
is the cargo which to be discharged. Now, shortly we will see animation, you will understand more, more easily. So Marflex, yeah, this one. Electrical driving pump. Yeah, you see, you can imagine it, the man standing by here and you see how big is the motor. Yeah, it's very, very big, very powerful, but very easy to operate. Now we are going for the hydraulically driving pump. 90% of the vessel of the product tanker and chemical tanker are equipped with the hydraulic driving pump. Let's uh, call it the Framo. Yeah, the Framo is the, just the maker. It's a, uh, everybody speaks Framo, but understanding that hydraulic driving pump. So it's the same like a Xerox. It's a copy machine, but if uh, somebody's uh, speak is a Xerox. It, uh, everybody understands that they must make the copy. Okay, so is the Framo. How it's operated. The Framo has the cargo, uh, has the liquid of the hydraulic oil which is located in the engine room. The engine room has to push the, uh, the hydraulic oil on deck. I have a, uh, several videos. You can download the videos. You can see it, how it works. It's, it is a very important for you to understand from how the working this hydraulic system. Here you will see. So the Framo pumps, the Framo power packs working in engine room, pushing the hydraulic oil on deck. And from this hydraulic oil is going to be distributed on each tank, each cargo tank has its own pump. I will show you the video and uh, please try to understand how it works. Okay, so hydraulic, you see here is not electrical motor, nothing with electricity here. It's everything with a hydraulic, hydraulic oil. So hydraulic oil is going this way, rotating the impeller and by this way, the cargo is going to the money. That's what is inside of this cargo pump, hydraulic driving pump. That's how to start it. That's, I will I explain you also on the simulator. I will show you the difference uh, on the simulator. When you start two pump with a full capacity, <clears throat> it's same discharge rate. In case, if you will compare it with the four pumps, it's a 50% capacity, but where you win? You win with the four pumps, 50% capacity that is going, it's safe. It's consumed less power and uh, it is the very, uh, very easy to manipulate, yeah? So when you discharge four tanks and you take attention, okay, this pump will discharge more, this less, you can easily to operate, to monitor it. When you discharge only two pumps with a full capacity, very uh, small, your, your smallest mistake can lead the big difference. So you can go from one side to another side, the pumps can push each other and you can receive the cargo from in that case that you will never understand where from this cargo appeared. So that's why I suggest you, not I, it is the recommendation from the Framo to use four pumps instead of the two pumps with the hundred capacity. Stripping procedures. Stripping procedure. I have animation video and I will show you. It's also very useful how to work it with it and it's very nice. Well, let me see where is the stripping procedures here. And you can see the Framo. Where is the again? The company 
Frank Moen AS with the trade name Framo is located in Bergen, a city in the west coast of Norway with long traditions in shipping and maritime business. Framo is today the leading supplier of submerged cargo pumping systems to the world tanker market. In year 2000, more than 1,400 cargo tankers equipped with Framor cargo pumps are daily crossing the seven seas and safely and efficiently carry and handle all types of liquefied cargoes. In this video, we will highlight correct operation of Framor cargo pumping systems during loading, discharging, stripping, and tank cleaning. The Framo system can also incorporate heating, cooling, and circulation of the cargo, all up to the owner's requirement. Okay. Sequence number one, loading the cargo tanks. Correct operation of pumps and valves to avoid pressure shocks in the cargo pipeline system during loading. Or severe damage to pipelines, hoses, loading arms, and cargo pumps. To avoid pressure shocks, start the loading slowly and don't open or close the cargo valve in the system too quickly. Especially pipelines and high flow Our rates chance. are involved. Frommel recommends yeah. installing a separate cargo drop line. To obtain a satisfaction. Our chance. Uh -huh. Factory loading rate. Uh -huh. And to make it possible to bypass the cargo pump during loading. Give it up. This is a recommended chance for a chance. In the thermal system. Uh -huh. If bypassing is not possible due to valve arrangement, use the following procedures to avoid pressure peaks in the cargo piping during loading. Keep manifold valve closed until the cargo reaches the manifold. Open the manifold valve partly to fill cargo line on deck. Open the cargo drop line valve and pump discharge valve slowly until you reach maximum capacity. Remember maximum loading pressure is 8 bar measured at the top of the pump. Continue to load through the drop line and the cargo pump. If the ship is not equipped with a drop line, follow the same procedure except for operation of the drop line valve. Most ships today have an integrated computer system which takes care of control and monitoring of all activities within the cargo tank section, such as pump capacity control, valve control, temperature and ullage control. If the loading has been stopped and the cargo valves are closed, it's important to restart the loading by following the same procedure as described earlier. Finally, some small differences in the loading procedure may apply for a chemical carrier, product carrier, oboe and crude tanker. But the main rule is the same. All valves which control the liquid flow should be opened slowly. The time taken for the power operated valve to move from open to shut and from shut to open must be checked regularly at their normal operating temperatures. Sequence number two, discharging the parcel cargoes. Start the hydraulic power pack and increase the hydraulic system pressure. If the hydraulic oil temperature is below 20 degrees centigrade, circulate the oil through the heating valve at maximum 100 bar prior to raising the hydraulic system pressure to approximately 150 bar. Start the cargo pump slowly and let it run with hydraulic pressure 40 to 50 bar for approximately one to two minutes with closed cargo pump valve. Raise the pump's discharge pressure above manifold pressure to avoid backflow over pumping and then open the cargo pump discharge valve. Increase the hydraulic motor pressure 
until required discharge pressure or capacity is achieved. If required, increase the hydraulic system pressure. Follow the same procedure for the next parcel. Ensure that enough hydraulic power is available. If not, the hydraulic pressure will drop and the capacity head will be reduced. Okay, the last one I want to repeat here. Raise the pump's discharge pressure above manifold pressure to avoid backflow over pumping and then open the cargo pump discharge valve. Increase the hydraulic motor pressure until required discharge pressure or capacity. If required, increase the hydraulic system pressure. Well, uh, she said, if required, increase the hydraulic system pressure. What does it mean? It's a different part. One part is in engine room. They have a big capacity motors. They are starting these motors, engineers. Okay, let me say you start it, you press the bottom, but in engine room, they are arranging the system to work. And the, for the hydraulic oil from or hydraulic oil is going with a high pressure on deck. When you use two cargo pumps, you must to start one big motor in engine room. But if you will start three or four or five cargo pumps, the one big pump in engine room is not enough. They must to start engineers, must to start another one, maybe another three. Yeah, so just to produce them as more powerful hydraulic on deck as you need. This one is on simulator, in the exercise, you will pass it. You will start the cargo pump it's rotating, but without result. You must understand yourself. You will do it yourself just to think, oh, one motor is not enough. I must start two motors. And this one you will have also exercise when to understand and when not to understand. Of course, I will show you. Of course, firstly, I will show you. But later on, you will do your exercises and you will do the score for it. Okay, let's go further. Let's go ahead. Where is the shearing shear? Let's continue with this material. The time is running. Yeah. So here, if you, you have hydraulic driving portable frame pump, the hydraulic driving portable frame pump, it's a um, so the picture is very easy, but in real life, it's very, very hard, hard to operate and hard to work. When you use it, when you operate it, when your main from or pump is stuck and not working, in this case, you must arrange the hydraulic from or portable pump. I prepared some videos also for you here, how to operate, I will try to just to make more interest for you. I will show you that video. Do you see it? Yes, we can see yes. it. Okay. So this one is a training only. That was on board of my vessel as exercise, as a training, we arrange it. And you see how many people working on one to install the one emergency frame of pump. So you have to open this, all the valves, uh, sorry, all the bolts to remove it. Next, you see how difficult. It's not a pair. I not, again. Now? Yeah. Okay, you see how it's difficult to arrange.
You can see? No. Again. All right. Uh, what? All right. What can I do? I just will show you the next and. So this motor is very heavy. It's about 170 kilograms. Where is this one? Okay, next um, to install it, to run it. Again. Now they are connecting the discharge line. Where to discharge it? Stop sharing again. And finally, most probably, finally, we got it. Okay, and now I want to show you the last one, how it's work with the water. With the water and uh, so. Okay, that is only training. That's why we discharge the water on deck. Okay, again, that was only training. And we just prepared the some water amount in the cargo tank and um, study with the crew how to operate in emergency situation. That is not normal common situation, but sometimes it's happened and the crew must be familiar and must understand how to operate with the Pramo cargo, emergency Pramo. Because in the port, if this will happen, you will have a big trouble. Everybody pressing you, charterers pressing, please hard, um, push more faster, more faster. Agent is calling from this side, owner from another side, and you have to move. In this. Well, uh, if somebody interesting of it, uh, please go ahead, download the full video from uh, that page which I provide to you, and you can you can see the sum so on the picture again it's very easy but in the, the real life it's very difficult
Now I want to show you the cargo valves. Another 10 minutes remaining and I will show you quickly to explain. You have three types normally, three and plus one, the cargo lines, the uh, cargo valves on deck. One is the bow valve, gate valve and butterfly valve. All of them has the positive and the negative sides. Yeah, let's we discuss one by one of them. So butterfly valves, it's a working very easy. You just open this way. And if you want to close, you just turn it and it closed by the flap. It closing the line. Yeah, so it's very easy to close. So that is open situation that is closing and it is a, a totally closed the valve. So it's very easy. The positive side of this valve, you can, regulate the quantity amount of discharge line yes here so discharge liquid so if you need 10 percent open you can 10 percent only open we can regulate the flow but the negative side this one is not working is working of course but can leak under high pressure when you have a high pressure the flap can release the uh, liquid you know, from one side to another so that is a structure. You have a manual valve. Instead of the manual wheel, you can put the hydraulic side, hydraulic one. So open, close this space. Yeah. So here is a small video. Do you see video? Yes. yes. Okay, nice. Here is a small video about how it's operating. Yeah. I will be a little bit faster because you have. So this is bolts, valves. Let me see. So liquid coming. It's closed. It's now opening and the liquid passing away. So that's how it's closed. It's very easy, very easy to operate, but these valves are sometimes, not sometimes, many times are leaking and they can create you a trouble. So next one, next is the ball valves. This one you can find in any shop, thousands. You can see the, how it works. You just handle open, handle close. That is a ball. And uh, let's we see again the short video. I will just speed up. Sphere and bow. Okay, number three, which is using on the big vessels is the gate valve. Gate valve also is very uh, common to use. They have a very good um, pressure holding capacity. So they can be closed. So, but they need a big amount of space and they operating very slowly. To open it fully, you need about two, three minutes. To close it again, two, three minutes, yeah, because you see, so uh, you can find in the internet how they're operating, but here I want to appoint you this one for your attention. Butterfly, positive, is a fast operation, able to adjust flow rate. Con, not effective for high pressure. Ball valve, able to hold high pressure, but not able to adjust flow rate. Yeah, so it's very difficult to adjust. Gate valve, able to keep high pressure and big capacity flow rate. So positive and negative side, slow operation need a long time to open, close, very massive and needs a lot of space. On the chemical tanker, you will not find so many space to operate with this one. 
here how the uh, gate valve is operating. So the cargo is passing here, stops because the gate is closed. When you gate open, the part of cargo passing away. One more uh, for you. Uh, probably here is a video. Yes, in the video, maybe you can see it. how it's operating the gate valve. Opening. or closing so that is a gate valve please download it from my site and uh, from my uh, uh, cloud and uh, check it one more which i want to show you is the this type of the valve this type is the globe valve this one is not used for the cargo pumps not for cargo uh, because it's uh, not reliable but this one is used for fire lines. And when you will be third officer responsible for the safety of fire lines, you that will be your headache, really headache. They, they are leaking always and you can have always prob, um, efficiency observation from the inspection. Because that will be your responsibility to, to check them how to work. Please check the video here and um, this video will show you the principle of working. So this plate is always leaking and you have to remove this one, clean it, polishing it and put the valve back. When you will be third officer, I repeat again, that will be your head day for the, uh, but not for the cargo. That one is the bonus for you. So finally, here are the questions. Not all, but some questions what you will you will pass on your exam okay please read these questions where you will find the answers on this slideshow okay that's all for today please ask me the questions and uh, if you have questions that is the right time to ask me. no no questions okay in this case, I repeat again, probably this week on the Saturday, I will invite you groups one by one in academy on the fourth floor for the simulator training. Please pass to your friends. It is compulsory to attend. It, is, it will be very good for you. And that will be part of your exam, the simulator training. So come, make training, and that's good. The schedule, I will explain you when and how to come in the academy. I will discuss with the rector if he will give me permit. I will call all of you to the fourth floor on Saturday. Okay, that is all for me today. Thank you very much for your attendance. And see you on Saturday. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. Home. Home this.